friends, this video on mechanical properties of fluids part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we studied about the flow speed of incompressible fluid. That is how do we determine the speed of, I mean how, how is the speed of incompressible fluid through a tube of varying length is determined. Now we will learn about a device which is used to measure the speed of the incompressible fluid. This is known as venturi meter. Venturi meter is a device to measure the flow speed of incompressible fluid. So how does it look like? It basically consists of a tube of a broad diameter. If you see, this is a tube of broad diameter with a larger cross-sectional area. However, it has a small constriction at the middle. That means this tube is of broad diameter with a constriction in the middle. If you see this blue colored tube, you can see how it looks like. Now, it is attached to a YouTube manometer. We studied about YouTube manometer, right? What was it? It was a device which is used to measure the gauge pressure. That is, the gauge pressure means the difference of pressure between the atmosphere and the system. So, basically the venturi meter consists of a broad tube with constriction at the middle. This is the constriction. It consists of a YouTube manometer. One end of the manometer is connected to the constriction and the other end is connected to the broader side of the venturi meter. That is one arm of the venturi meter. One arm is at the constriction and the other one is at the broader neck point at this point. Right? So this is how it looks like. The YouTube manometer is filled with uh, any liquid of density say rho. Let us suppose this consists of this is filled with a liquid of density rho. So what happens basically is let us suppose that this area at the broader neck point the cross sectional area is A1 and let us suppose that air or any fluid which moves through this part has a velocity v1. Similarly, let us consider that the cross-sectional area at this constriction is a2 and the velocity with which a fluid moves at this part is v2. So, according to the equation of continuity again, wherever the area is more, the velocity would be less. So, we see that since a1 is greater than a2, that is in this broader neck point, the area is more, therefore the velocity would be lesser when compared to the velocity at this constriction, right? Similarly, we also know that pressure is inversely proportional to area. So, at this broader neck point, the area is more, therefore the pressure is less. Let us suppose the pressure here is P1 and the pressure at the constriction is P2. So, what happens? We find from here that pressure P1 is lesser than the pressure P2. Why? Because area A1 is greater than area A2. So, since area is more, the pressure is lesser. Now, because due to this difference in pressure, as we already know that a fluid moves when there is a pressure difference. Because of this difference in pressure, at this end and the constriction, the fluid which is there in the U-tube, it moves. And this movement of the fluid is marked by the level of the fluid in this column. So this is how it can be shown. If you observe this diagram, initially, this was the level of the liquid or the fluid, right? So now, because of the pressure difference, when air is blown into the venturi meter through this end, the velocity of the air being the cross-sectional area at this end being more, the velocity is lesser. As it reaches the constriction part, the velocity increases. Similarly, since the cross-sectional area here is more, the pressure is lesser. As it reaches the constriction, the pressure again increases. Due to this pressure difference, what happens is, the liquid which is there in this U-tube, it starts flowing. Due to the flow of the liquid, the level of the liquid in this column of the U-tube changes. So as a result, we can calculate the value of velocity due to the changed column rise of the fluid in the U-tube. 
So that is what we will derive in our next slide that how do we exactly calculate the velocity of the fluid. But here I told you what is the concept behind which there is a change in the column of the UT manometer. Now let us determine mathematically the speed with which the fluid, how do we calculate, evaluate the speed of the fluid. As I told you, we assume that the area around at the broader end is A1 and the velocity V1. So according to the equation of continuity, we can say that A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. So where A2 and V2 is the area and velocity at the constriction and A1 and V1 are the area and, well, area and velocity at the broader neck of the venturi meter. So from this we can say that V2 is equal to A1 by A2 into V1. So this V2 is nothing but this fluid speed which we want to determine. Now let us apply Bernoulli's equation. According to Bernoulli's equation, the pressure, the sum of pressure, kinetic energy per unit volume and potential energy per unit volume at the constriction should be equal to the sum of these three quantities at the broader neck point of the venturi meter. So P1 plus half rho V1 square plus rho G H is equal to P2 plus half rho V2 square plus rho G H. So if you see that this H is equal in both the cases, why? Because in this case the venturi meter tube is not at varying heights. Therefore the height of the venturi meter tube is the same. So we can cancel these two terms as the pipe is horizontal. Therefore from this we can write P1 minus P2 is equal to half rho V2 square minus V1 square. Now from the first equation which we wrote from equation of continuity, we found that V2 is equal to A1 by A2 into V1. So from this equation we can write V1 in terms of V2. So V1 can be written as A2 by A1 into V2. So let us write that this will be half into rho v2 square minus so this would be half rho v2 square minus v1 square. So from this first equation of continuity we can write v2 as a1 by a2 into v1 that is half into rho a1 square by a2 square into v1 square minus v1 square. So this we can write as half rho p1 square a1 square by a2 square minus 1. Now as I told you because of this difference in pressure the fluid in the U tube changes its level. Because of the pressure difference the fluid starts flowing and as a result the level in the U tube changes. So we can say that this pressure difference causes a change in the level of the fluid in the column. So we can say this is equal to H rho G. So P1 minus P2 is half rho V1 square A1 square by A2 square minus 1. This is equal to H rho G. So rho will get cancelled on both sides. So we get V1 square is equal to 2H rho G. So here in this case, we see that the value of rho is different in both the cases. In the first case, this rho is basically the density of the fluid, in this case H rho G. When we say this is H rho G, what is this rho? It is basically the density of the fluid inside the U-tube manometer. Let us denote it as rho m. 
So this is rho m. So they will not get cancelled. So the velocity v1 square will be equal to 2h rho m into g divided by rho into a1 square by a2 square minus 1 to the power minus 1 by 2. So this is the velocity. So this is the flow speed of a of an incompressible fluid. So this is how we determine the velocity using a venturi meter. So let us have a quick review what we did. In this case we told that the venturi meter has a small constriction whose cross-sectional area is A2 and the velocity of the fluid at the constriction is V2. And on the broader side the cross-sectional area is A1 and the velocity of the fluid is V1. According to equation of continuity, A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. So we can say V2 is equal to A1 by A2 into V1. Now we applied Bernoulli's equation at the constriction as well as at the broader neck of the venturi meter. So this is the Bernoulli's equation. Rho G H gets cancelled because it is a horizontal tube. So therefore the height at the constriction as well as the height at the broader neck is the same. So these two terms will get cancelled. So from here we get P1 minus P2 is equal to this expression. Now because of the difference in the pressure, the fluid in the U-tube manometer changes its level. So that means due to this pressure difference, P1 minus P2, there is a change in the level of the column that is H rho G. So we can say that P1 minus P2 is equal to H into rho M into G. What is this rho M? This is basically the density of the fluid inside the U-tube. Whereas what is this rho? This is the density of the fluid which passes through the venturi meter tube. So both the rows are different. Now we equate both the equation and we find out the value of V1 as this expression. So this is how we evaluate or determine the value of the fluid speed using a venturi meter. Let us look at a practical application of venturi meter. Just now I told you about the venturi meter and how it works. Now we'll talk about certain things which we use in our day-to-day -day life and they also use the same principle. So here we'll take the example of a spray gun. So all of you must have seen spray gun or a perfume bottle which is normally used in our day-to-day -day life. So how do they function? It is very much similar to what we discussed in the venturi meter. What happens here is let us suppose this is the bottle which is filled with the fluid. Here is a pipe which goes straight till this constriction. Very similar to the venturi meter, there is a narrow end of the pipe which you can consider this end with a greater cross sectional area and then suddenly there is a constriction at the middle. So you can consider this as the constriction. So here the area decreases. So this has larger area, so the pressure here is less, whereas here the area is less, so the pressure is more. Now because of this pressure difference, when what happens generally when we pump, when we play, press the handle, some pressure is applied from this end, as a result the air blows in. Now the velocity of the air again changes depending upon the cross-sectional area. Also, because of the difference in the cross-sectional area, there is a difference in pressure. Due to this pressure difference, the level of the liquid in this pipe rises. So what happens? It draws the liquid from this trough which contains this liquid. As a result, the liquid moves up and through this opening, it comes out and we get it in the form of a spray. Since this end is open, so what happens when the liquid comes up through this pipe, it directly goes out and it is sprayed. So basically what happened was because of the difference in the cross-sectional area, there was a pressure difference which forced the fluid to flow. The fluid moved up through the pipe and through this opening it came out and it was sprayed. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials,
study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.